Hey, it's Tommy B, host of This is the G Podcast. To keep our podcast real and unfiltered, we accept limited sponsorship dollars. Instead, we depend on you, our listeners. Now you can support us and look good buying our swag. Our merchandise store is open for fall 2022. You'll find coffee mugs, shirts, hoodies, and there's more to come. Look for the link in our podcast notes of each show or go to our page at castropolis.net forward slash this is the G Podcast. That's C A S. T-R-O-P-O-L-I-S dot net forward slash this is the G podcast. Be a G. Support the podcast, y'all. News, politics, pop culture, and that piping hot tea from the one and only Tanya B. This is the G podcast. The next time you drive through Central Georgia, we've got a radio station we think you'll love. We're Magic 100, playing all of the songs you grew up with. You'll find us at 100.1 FM. That's 100.1. On I-75, you can tune us in from the north at Locust Grove and from the south when you get to Perry. 100.1 FM. Classic soul hits. Magic 100. This is the G Podcast with your host, Tommy B. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is episode 147 of This is the G Podcast. Welcome, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all gonna put a smile on your face. I know you're glad to be here. What's going on, y'all? Everybody having a great day? Yeah. Good, good weekend? Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at me. Yeah. Like that. You know why? I'm, ha- I'm happy because it's fall. <laughs> I'm happy because summer's over. You know, I, I am not a summer person. The heat in Georgia, the humidity in Georgia, you know, just to get a few days with less humidity, you know, just does something to me. And speaking of that, you know, um, we're heading into fall. We are in, officially in fall. And, and yes. I, I invited a guest on who we'll get to in just a minute uh, because it's, it's a special. We're heading into a special season for some who are who are in a position to do so, to, to, to be cuffable. And, and so I invited um, a, a good friend and, and a friend of the family on uh, the Castropolis podcast family to come in and say a few words, kind of get us into this new season. Um, and she's standing by. So, 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 you know, without further ado, welcome to the G podcast again, episode 147. I'm your host, Tommy B. Each week we do news, politics, pop culture, and that piping hot tea from the one and only y'all give it up for Tanya B. Yes. Was that a bird flying by your, your screen? <laughs> it was, you know, what was that thing I told you? It was something that just happened at 554. Oh, I Some know. type of solstice something. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I bet. I oh, bet. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The new moon. The yeah, new moon our, just, our guest. Um, yes. I, I bet she can expound and give us some information on that. I am sure she can. So when we get to her, we definitely have to ask her about that. So, you know, of course, Tanya B is here. She's got that piping hot tea. Um, and, and this week, y'all, it, it's Whew. a busy week, a lot yes. of stuff going on. We've got some commentary on a few things everybody's talking about. Of course, Syracuse Mike is coming up. Uh, Tish James, uh, quarter of a billion dollar lawsuit against Trump. He'll be talking about that in the news. Um, you know, everyone's talking about the uh, head coach of Boston and Neil Long, the the, the infamous seven year engagement. So we'll we'll kind of. You know, Tanya B, I'm going to let you get the rumors and innuendo out there uh, for the people. But we did get it. Hey, I don't yeah. make the news. I don't make the news. I just report it. Just report it. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, you're also going to tell us. And, and as we come on today, Bad Girl Riri is going to be at the Super Bowl next year. So you're going to have some information about that. I'm excited about that. But first and foremost, y'all give it up again for Tanya B in the building. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hostess with the mostest, the bird wire, Friday, Saturday, Saturday nights, 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. And then Saturdays at noon. Uh, what was on the bird wire? What, you, what was special on the bird wire this week? Catch people up. Uh, this week, I, I, I've been looking at some of the one hit wonders. I did one hit wonder uh, female singers and artists, if you will, from the year 1986. And, you know, people forgot about sometimes unless you really are up in it. Songs like Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rent by Gwen Guthrie, which was and I mean, that's a classic as far as I'm concerned. That's the hey, that, that was the club shut you down anthem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah shut yeah. the brothers down. What's up, baby? 
uh, and mm. none going on but the rim. No, right. yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, so it'll make you think of things like that. There was um, this one hit wonder group out of Portland, Oregon called New Shoes, which was actually a mm-hmm. Caucasian husband and wife uh, duo, but they got the pass and they just, they did a one, you know, a hit it and quit it. And then I actually reached back into one of the brides of Funkenstein and one of the protégés of Rick James was Val Young, If You Should Ever Be Lonely and Seduction. She had a, she had one album, but she, she made a little impact. And then next week on The Birdwire, I'm going to focus on um, some one-hit wonders of the year 1984. So that Excellent. should be interesting. Good yeah. stuff. So tell people again, where can they check out the bird wire and where? One more time. Okay, well, you know, Castropolis Podcast Network every Friday and Saturday, 8 and 10 p.m. Eastern Time with an encore, not to be confused with Cheryl Lynn, each and every Saturday at 12 noon. And this is and I say hands down, bar none, the undisputed home of the best new and classic independent music and some of the best music that you've never heard until now. So we focus on, you know, those artists that were major label artists that are now still legendary and indie artists like Shaka Khan, The Temptations, Will Downing, all those folks. And then we have, you know, new folks like Blue Soul 10 and Tanya Nolan and Damon Carl. So this is, you know, we support independent artists. So, you know, if you think you're ready, come fly with me. And I heard you play Wire. that... Um... John Legend from his new project, too. Yes, yeah. there are several songs from the album that are good in this. He's got one with Lettucey, and he's kind of really kind of reached across the aisle with a lot of people. And this is a, a double album, and we don't see too many double albums in today's climate. You know, back, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire Devotion was one of the biggest double albums I think of probably of all time. Mm-hmm. But um, so, yeah, it's called Legend Volume One and Two. So, Excellent. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, y'all give it up one more time for Tony B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother from another mother is out this week, um, and I invited a really special guest, um, really a friend of the podcast, a true supporter of the network uh, from our humble beginnings. Uh, Onye Love is in the building. Y'all give it up for Onye. And you can find all things Onye at Onye.love. Am I correct in saying that again? You know, Onye, Onye.love. Is that it? Yes, you are. Yes. And and Onye is our West Coast connection. She out there in L.A., California, A. And and you know we were talking about the uh, what is it the fall? What what is you know? There's a special name for it. Can you kind of give us some insight, Onye, into that? On um, fall or autumn equinox? That is it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. See, I knew. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. My daughter probably <laughs> could run in here and say fall. <laughs> you know, so you know, that's just us. But oh. but uh again, welcome on you, love. Uh, I asked Onye mm-hmm. to come in. Uh but but first let me let me say uh Onye is a LA based healing artist, priestess, teacher, supporting people on their journey of grounding, peace, and joy. Uh her brand promotes spirituality, self-development, wellness, and healing. Again, find out find out more about Onye at Onye.love. And her podcast is at castropolis.net, O's Corner. Again, welcome, Onye. And Onye, uh, you know, I, I, I had a, a, the great opportunity to work with Onye on her initial, her first podcast. And um, she had a segment. Uh, it was, I, I forgot which day of, uh, which week of the month the segment was, but it was called Love, Sex, and Dating. And, and I heard about cuffing. And I, somebody was telling me, hey, cuffing season is coming up. I said, what are you talking about? And they were saying, well, you know, women do this thing uh, when, when the weather gets cooler, right, you know, right at the beginning of or mid fall. And I said, well, let me reach out to Onye and see if she can kind of help us out with that. So Onye, with that said, tell us what <laughs> I know you laughing. Tell us what this whole thing is. And, and tell, I mean, in, enlighten us on cuffing. Definitely, definitely. And it's thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you for having me. It's beautiful to be here. Beautiful to see you, Tommy, see you, Tanya B, and to just be with everyone. And um, yes, the segment that I had was LSD with Oni's. LSD stand for love, sex and dating and all things relating, because I was like, look, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what a lot of folks are doing. What are we doing? So it was a time to just ask those questions, to ponder about things, to be in a comical and humorous space about things such as love, sex and dating, because those topics can we can make them heavier than they need to be, really. 
And it's interesting because, <laughs> Tommy, I think, did you say that when you found out about cupping season, you, the description that you were given was that women do specific things in cupping well, season? Well, you know, it was, it was on. <laughs> yeah, Not really. Yeah, I'm just saying it was like, I, I think it came from a song back in, it was 2012, Fabu, you know, Fab, was, was Fabulous did the song, the rap song? Fabulous. Yeah, rapper mm-hmm. Fabulous did something related to cuff he said something in it so it kind of became a thing but you you kind of still mm-hmm. hear about it not as much so it, i, I kind of got an idea that it was a, a female thing so is it or is it not am i wrong yeah that's funny <laughs> and it's and it's interesting because when you asked me to talk about it first of all you know and i'll just be very transparent because like i said lsd with Oni was like what are we doing what am i doing i don't know these topics are just nebulous for a lot of people yeah. so even me myself i was like oh cuffing season <laughs> what is that i kind of had vaguely heard about it but in doing research i was like oh okay got it it makes sense and it's not just a woman thing. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, Thank I, I saw you. your face. You were like, mm, I don't know. So, <laughs> and if we think about it, <laughs> good, good. So you're and if we that think look. about it, just looking at just human beings in general, you know, we are all seeking love. We are all seeking affection. We are all seeking connection. Now. We're also all seeking security. We're also all seeking comfort. We're all seeking all these different things based on our own conditioning and our ideas. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of these things can also be tied into the natural cycles of nature and the seasons. And it's just so interesting to look at humanity at a time where, okay, we may not be necessarily, or at least (laughs) many of us, you know, because there are some people that still live in these places where oh no, I'm not going to be eaten by a lion or I don't need to be mindful of these specific things in nature. You know, many people that are in industrialized places or places where the civilizations look a certain way, Hmm. our dangers have shifted and many of the things that we were afraid of in the past, we have moved past that, but we've also created new fears and new ways to, you know, imagine that we're not safe or we're not secure. We're looking for even relationships with people in order to really ground in a sense of security, Hmm, sometimes in a positive and neutral way and sometimes in a very negative way. And so when we look at this idea of cuffing season and I, so I looked it up and I, you know, I wanted to, as I was looking it up and I was considering cuffing and then just considering relationships in general, I kind of came up with these five tips for cuffing season, but really you can just take it and apply it to your life in general, as far as relationships, as far as love, as far as just connection. And I picked the number five because five is associated with a energy, a deity, a goddess, if you want to call it that, but a deity within the tradition that I practice and that I'm a priestess of called Oshun. And Oshun is this divine, feminine, very powerful energy that in a very simplistic way is considered a deity of love. But love can be looked at very surface level and love is deep. Mm, okay. Very deep and very profound. And love is life. Life operates and runs off of the fuel of love. And her energy is about love in and of itself, loving ourselves as we are, knowing our value and our worth, seeing our reflections and just being in such awe of our reflections because we're a reflection of the all that is of God. And so I wanted to take that energy of love, that energy of worth and value and reflection and just utilize that to to be the backbone energetically of these five tips that I am giving. Okay. So so are you going to, are you going to give them an order like five, four, three, two, one, or is it just. I'll I'll, I'll do one, five, five, four, three, two, one, whatever Uh, we got to take. You knock them out. You know, take it in the order. (laughs) There's not really an order of importance per se, but whatever order works for you Hmm. and whatever points or point works for you, take what's yours and leave the rest. Excellent. At the end of the day, love yourself. <laughs> Good stuff. Let's hear. Let's let's hear. Go ahead. Shoot. Go so, ahead. first one, or what in the list that I have, you know, we'll move away from any idea of the order being super important. Is awareness is the golden key. 
be in your awareness. So even being aware in awareness about the idea of cuffing season. So what is cuffing season and looking up the definition. So it's a time of year when the weather starts to turn cooler and people start to seek relationships to get them through those upcoming long, chilly nights. Hmm, okay. So be awareness, aware. awareness, be awareness. aware. Got it. Okay. So one, be aware that there's this idea called cuffing season. So be mindful because people, if they are doing this intentionally or maybe not knowing intentionally, but because it's tied to the weather. And again, when it's cold, we want to warm ourselves. Right. And yeah. some people are going to go for a blanket. Some people are going to build a fire. Some people are going to try to get a body <laughs> to create that warmness. Yeah. So yeah. be aware of that for yourself to see, oh, OK, am I acting from this place of it's cold and I feel alone and I'm trying to bring someone into my space to mitigate that coldness and that loneliness awareness. Hmm. You know, some people say that it's from October 1st until about Valentine's day, you know, before the weather starts getting warmer, some say late fall or early winter until again, the weather starts to thaw out and we get into spring. So we're looking at the awareness of the cycle of nature, awareness of ourselves and our tendencies as human beings overall. Hmm. And then the awareness of ourselves as individually. So you're in L.A. You never I mean, does, your season, so, does your season change? I mean, the, season, <laughs> the seasons change in a day. It could be super hot, like in the early morning, afternoon. And yeah. then in the nighttime, it's a little cooler. So, yeah, it may not be drastic getting hailstorms and snowstorms. But it's like if I'm wearing shorts in the afternoon and then all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, I can't be in these shorts anymore because it's nighttime and it's a little colder. Right. I feel like we have season changes like in a day. So again, if you think if the cycles of the weather and the seasons affect our behavior, just know where you're at. Know who you're with and know what your own natural tendencies are within that. So you're mindful of, oh, am I wanting to be with someone because I just really want to open up myself and be in that space? Or is it something else? And are these people wanting to actually cultivate relationships or are they trying to, again, mitigate that what we think of as natural instinct to try to be comfortable Okay. And to try to be warm and secure. Okay. So awareness, tap into your awareness, know, know who you are, know where you're, know where you are and know who you're with and what everyone's doing. Excellent. Awareness your, is key. Go ahead. What's your next one? Awareness is, the, is one. For two, and this, th- th- these are kind of tied. They, they're all tied together in, in different ways. Know thyself and thy preferences. So if you're aware that there is this need and all these different things are there, but you've decided, oh, you know, I do want to explore some sort of relationship. And I think the thing with cuffing season is that people get into these short term relationships to last them within a short frame of time to, again, mitigate the loneliness, mitigate the cold and so forth. So if you're aware that that's happening, you're aware that you're doing that and you make the decision, know thyself. What are your preferences? What are you going to be okay with and not be okay with? Know thyself. A lot of people walking around not knowing themselves and because you don't know yourself or not willing to step into the process of getting to know yourself, you start to get into all sorts of entanglements (laughs) that may not be in your highest interest. Know thyself. (laughs) Use whatever experience you've had in the past to understand what it is that you're doing presently and what you want for yourself in the future, whether it's short term or long term or you're open to either. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Give me number three. Number three, again, tied to the first two, honesty is the best policy. Once you're aware of the season and all the things happening, once you know thyself and what you prefer, what you don't prefer, what you're willing to handle and not handle, be honest about that with yourself and with the people you're engaging with. A lot of people walking around here, in their minds, they want a long-term relationship, but because they're not wanting to be alone, because people are stepping up to them who maybe are showing them that they just want something short term. And you think in your mind, well, I'll change that person. They're not being honest, Mm -hmm. saying, you know what, I want something long term, so I'm not going to engage in that. Or I want something short term. You sound like you want something long term. It's not going to work out. Be honest. If you are acting as if you are someone other than who you are, then the person that the other people are being with is not you anyway. So that's lonely. Yeah. Like you're afraid of being alone, but you're not being yourself to not be alone, but not being yourself is very lonely. So be honest about who you are, what you're seeking and be honest about situations that are just not going to work for you. Good stuff. So you've got awareness, know thyself, honesty. And number four, number four, cuff you first. 
<laughs> love you first. Again, people walking around trying to find someone to be with, cuddle with, love, do things with. But I'm like, okay, what are you doing for yourself that you want other people to do with you? If you're not willing to be at home and just luxuriate with yourself, if you're not willing to take yourself out on a nice dinner, cook a nice dinner for yourself, take yourself to the movies, enjoy yourself, enjoy your own company, then why should someone else? Hmm. Good point. People are looking for others to complete them yet they're not showing themselves the same love, affection, playfulness. So why, why should others reflect that to you? If you come from a place of self-love, treating yourself well, then as you step out into these places, you're not looking for others to fulfill that. You're looking for others to join you in that because you've established that foundation of doing it for yourself. Good stuff. So awareness, know thyself, honesty, cuff you first, and the final. What do you have? Hold hands with your joy. So associated with the previous one, but really whatever you decide to do, whether you're focusing during this cuffing season on loving yourself, cuffing yourself, or you've been practicing that and you're just looking to bring people into that experience with you, have fun, be in your joy, be light, chip away at what is heavy. If expectations are heavy, let go of expectations and allow whatever is showing up in the present moment to guide you, to show you what you need to know. Whatever we're doing, so many of us have just gotten into this place of being heavy, not trusting, having these expectations, being insistent, not going with the flow that we just reduce or dissolve or we make bitter whatever joy actually is there for us to experience. So practice this cuffing season, just really stepping into this place of I'm putting my joy first and that is going to be what guides me in the relationship I'm developing with myself or in the long-term or short-term relationships, playful relationships that I'm having with others. And no matter what you choose, if you're coming from that place of joy, then this season you will learn so much from it and gain so many beautiful opportunities. Good stuff. Tanya B, I'm throwing it to you. You got a question? Out of the five. So let me go over the five yeah. one more time. Let me make sure before you got awareness, know thyself, honesty, cuff you first and hold hands. Now repeat that last one. It's hold hands with hold hands, hands with your joy, with your joy, oh, joy. Yeah. With your joy. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Tanya. You know, it's interesting. You say that because I was just looking at, you know, some things on social media here recently. And what I found really interesting is it's like, ladies, you know, some people and some people just don't want to be alone at certain times of the day. And you know, I think when you talk about awareness, and you talk about honesty, not to compromise them, because the reality is about this whole cuffing thing is that there are some people out there. They be, they may be male or female. They're also looking for some short term housing. So they're looking for some place where they can. It's true. Wow. It's true. They want to move in. And let me tell you something. And landlords, listen up. And uh, ladies, listen up. You know, again, no, again, honesty, awareness, know your value. Because once somebody's in there, oh, baby, I want to be with you all the time. You know, I'm kind of in between places. Or, you know, when my house is getting reno renovated or fumigated. But once they're there 30 days, baby, they are a tenant. And you will have oh, to go no. to court. court <laughs> To put them out at the end of the season if they last that long. <laughs> so Tanya B, saying. you basically. And the other thing is, I'm, I'm gonna let you go. Go ahead. I'm, I'm stepping back. <laughs> I can't touch this. Go, <laughs> no, go no, I was gonna go to uh, to. An, I was going to go to another place with that, but I was going to ask, you know, uh, Anya, just, you know, there was the things you shared with us and just, you know, just this time of year, it's getting cold, it's getting, you know, people, you know, don't want to be outside. And the reality is there are a lot of homeless people, you know, in, you know, in just in this country or in, you know, in, in Atlanta and in LA, I'm sure there's an issue there as well. And, you know, I was just wondering if you had given any thought to how cuffing season was going to affect all the mental uh, uh, health issues that we have been dealing with the last two going into three years with the pandemic, because they say it's over, but it's not over. They say it's over. And then bam, here comes a new variant. Bam, here comes another booster. And everyone doesn't have access to that. And I'm like, you know what? I will cuff myself <laughs> from here and back. You ain't coming up in my spot if you are not vaxxed and boosted. And that's all Ooh. there is to it for me and my weighted blanket. I'm good. Yeah. Go ahead, Arnie. Yeah, look, I mean, there's so many different 
There's so many different factors and elements looking at just our individual lives, our society, the communities that we're in, the levels of access to resources, housing, water, food, basic necessities that, in my perspective, like why as human beings living on this earth, we were birthed on this earth for free, do we have to even navigate and negotiate the idea of having these things. And again, if we're looking at our weather patterns and the, again, the you know, being warm feels good. Being in a home feels good. Being around people feels good. So yes, there are those individuals that don't have the access to these things more immediately. And there are those individuals who may have access in certain levels of ways, but they don't see what access they have. Because, again, if we're so attached to ideas of having certain things in certain ways and we're fixated on them, then we might ignore the fact that, okay, you may not have a house in this way, but you have a space you can go to here. You may not have a warm body of someone else to, you know, provide that physical touch that you need. But if you have hands or if you have friends where you can just sit next to them, be next to them, do some type of touch that doesn't have to look a romantic way. Like, what are the resources that we do actually have that we can take advantage of and to use that to bolter, bolster our energy so that additional resources can come to us. And those of us that do have an abundant amount of resources, in what ways can we give to those that we see are struggling? So again, this idea of cuffing, if we remove this, like focusing on romantic relationships, focusing on oh, men and women and what they're trying to do of just like, okay, humanity and ensuring the comfort and the care of our fellow brothers and sisters, how can we switch it from like, I need to make sure my needs are met to, okay, how can I show up in such a way that during this season, during this time that can be challenging for folks, how can I actually give and support so that we're all from an integral, peaceful and joyful place, cuffing each other? Good stuff. Y'all give it up. Give it up for the one and only Only Love. How can people contact you? What's the best way uh, for people to contact you if they want to talk to, can, talk about you and, and a lot of all the things that you do, you bring to the table? How can they connect? Yeah, definitely. You can visit my website. That's www.onyi.love. And you can see the services that I provide, the different opportunities that I'm engaged in and anything that I have coming up as far as the calendar goes. You can also send me an email if you don't see kind of what you're looking for on the website and we can kind of see and figure out like how we can work together, whether it's for individual work, whether it's for group work, which is my jam, group work and healing. Um, but yeah, those are the main ways. Oh, social media. I'm on Instagram at onye.love. I'm on Facebook, Onye Love Official. So there's a lot of different ways to find me. And you're musical, too. So before we go into news, we're about to, you know, br go, go into news with Syracuse Mike. Um, you know, we're, again, we're heading into the fall season. I can't sing along with you. I know you probably wanted a, a duet, but I'm sorry because of the delay, <laughs> <I> folks. <laughs> Tell you, we don't shake your head. I'm going to talk to you after news anyway. <laughs> but uh, but uh, go ahead and, and, and take us into news with, with, uh, with some positivity. Let, let's start fall yeah, with, with something on a positive note. What you got? Go ahead. I'm going to leave it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll do a, a song from the tradition that I practice called Ifa and a song that is specific, again, to Oshun, the deity of self-reflection, of love, of joy, of sweetness, of community, of connection, to just imbue you with that energy to go out and cuff other people or stay in and cuff yourself. Either way, for you to take this energy with you and just know that you are seen, you are loved, and that's all you need to do and be. Yeah. So you want to close your eyes, place your hands on your heart, just breathe with ease and joy while you listen to this and allow it to take you where you need it to. Good stuff. Oh, 
pecho, lo mohan pecho, cale. Lo mohan pecho. Ore, ye, ye, o. Ore, ye, ye, o. May we love ourselves. May we see ourselves. May we love others. May we see others. May we know that we are worthy, valuable, because we exist. There's nothing more we need to do, nothing more we need to say. All we need to do is be ourselves. That is our only responsibility. May we love, may we love, may we love. Good stuff. I muted my mic. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Let me give it up for Onyi Love one more time, y'all. Thank you so much, Onyi. Uh, again, so much uh, the website is onyi.love. Welcome back anytime. Uh, and definitely we'll be reaching out to you again soon. Thank you, Onyi, so much. And uh, with that, y'all, let's go on and, and do some news with Syracuse Mike, and we'll be right back. It's time for the Week in News with Syracuse Mike. The longtime manager of hip-hop artist and actor Ludacris has been charged with murder. Shaka Zulu, whose real name is Ahmed Obofemi, was involved in a June shooting in a parking lot that left one person dead and two others, including Zulu, injured. Several days ago, he turned himself in and bonded out on the same day. Shaka Zulu's attorney says his client was attacked and has cooperated in the investigation and that the shooting was self-defense. The closing of one of Atlanta's two level one trauma centers has become a lightning rod for the debate over Medicaid expansion in Georgia. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams says the pending closure of Wellstar Atlanta Medical Center is another reason why Medicaid expansion is needed. Instead of addressing and tackling the closures of these hospitals, we know that once again, there will be a small step forward that does not take us anywhere close to the solutions we need. But Governor Kemp says expanding Medicaid would not have saved the hospital. The people that are saying that this hospital closed because there wasn't Medicaid expansion, they are lying to. The system itself has said that's not that would not have prevented uh, this closure. The Fed has raised the key interest rate by three quarters of a point for the third time in a row. And we anticipate that ongoing increases will be appropriate. That's Fed Chair Jerome Powell the rate increase is the Fed's continued effort to slow and stabilize inflation. The result, it will cost even more to borrow money. The Attorney General of New York is suing the Trump Organization, Donald Trump, and his three adult children. Tish James is accusing them of large-scale fraudulent financial practices. Everyday people cannot lie to a bank about how much money they have in order to get a favorable loan to buy a home or to send their kid to college. And if they did... The government would throw the book at them. In one example, the AG said the former president falsely inflated the square footage of his own apartment from 11000 to 30000 Trump then declared the apartment to be worth $327 million, an amount James said is significantly higher than any apartment ever sold in New York City. So what does this mean? We are again are permanently barring Mr. Trump and his family members from serving as an officer or director in any entity in the state of New York. We are barring Barring him from entering into any commercial real estate transactions for five years. We are barring Mr. Trump and the organization from applying for any loans for five years. James is also making a criminal referral to the feds. Trump called the move a witch hunt by a racist attorney general. Former President Donald Trump was on Fox News Wednesday when he made this statement about classified documents. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. Legal experts have maintained that's simply not the case and that there is typically a process that would have to be followed. Trump's comments were made ahead of a Wednesday appeals court decision ruling that the FBI can use the seized documents from his Mar-a-Lago home in its criminal investigation. The special master's review of about 100 records Records has been partially halted. That review would have allowed Trump's legal team to see them. Judge Raymond Deary, the special master, is able to continue his work reviewing the rest of the material that was seized. House Democrats easily passed four pro-policing bills on Thursday. It's a big win. One of the bills would train and dispatch mental health professionals to respond to emergencies involving behavioral health. Democrats are hoping at least some of the legislation, like grants for police training, will make it through the Senate. We still need that George Floyd Act, though, y'all. Come on. Come on. Y'all can do better. Come on. 
Yeah, y'all, y'all do that. I, I don't know. What's Come the holdup? I don't know. Oh, well, look, we got. Well, you know, we wait a minute. Wait a minute. To... You know who the holdup is. It's, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, well, I'm saying we, we need a Tamir Rice bill. Yes. We need a Sandra Bland bill. Yes. Yes, we we need, uh, what's the brother in. Uh, we even need. Uh, Oh, the brother with the with the loose cigarettes. Oh, um, oh, yeah. So we can go. We can go look, on we, and on. We need an Ama, yeah, We need an Amadou Diallo bill. Okay, so let, let's let's go there. Yep, so this yep. is something big, that is you big know. time, big time. And yep. uh, you know, Shaka Zulu. Uh, you know, of course, we're in the city of Atlanta, so we see a lot of efforts um, in the city. People who have worked with him over the years who are coming together to stand with him and support him and and stand for his social character. media as well. Yeah. 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 Social media people tune it as well. Yeah, yeah. But it's and, interesting. You know, I saw the video, and I mean, it was it, it clearly looks like a case of self defense where where they were kind of converging on him uh, on world hip hop. The videos, um, yeah, being shown. This, yeah. There's more to it. There's more to world it because you look at how yeah. yeah how the story first um, you know hit the. You know, the airwaves was, you know, there was, you know, again, you know, as a, with everything is always like this side, that side, and then there's always the truth. But, you know, at first it was, oh, there was a man who was beating up a woman and he came to her defense. This mm-hmm. man pulled a gun, Shaka pulled his gun, and there were other people around. Um, they, like I said, as I mentioned last week, other people that were around that actually witnessed this, you know, this happening, and they didn't also mention that this was a restaurant that he owned as well. Yeah. So yeah. you know, I think I don't know if we'll ever know, you know, what all the moving pieces will be, but you know, one thing I will say, what I know of him, is that he's not, to my knowledge, ever been known to be a violent person, an aggressive person, or somebody who just is like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm carrying the gun, so I'm just going to get out here and start wild. And that, that's not, you know, yeah, always I know a lot of people, so. same, same thing you're saying. A lot of people yeah. worked with him over the years and, you know, they, they basically indicate that this is, you know, outside of his character. So we'll see how, we'll see what comes out, um, you know, hopefully soon. Yeah. Uh, Sooner the other, than later. Yep, absolutely. The other quick thing, uh, y'all, if you are uh, buying a house or anything on interest, <laughs> uh, don't get right now, highest recommend, don't get a flexible uh, interest rate mortgage. Ooh, Do yeah. not make sure it is locked in because we don't know how far this thing is going, and and you don't want to be in a situation with interest rates beyond your control. Get a locked in um, and st- and steady interest rate if you are buying a home. Do not, because in some mm-hmm. cases they offer it to you cheaper. Don't go that route. Don't go the flexible route. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. You we don't know where this thing is end? going. Yeah. Right. So yeah. You pay on the front end or the back end. But I just think this whole thing, even with this, you know, Bank of America with all this shadiness, you know, these no doc mortgages. And it's like you can't yeah. even get through underwriting if you don't have to verify income. And it seems like it's just another setup, you know, to make people think that they're really concerned about the community. And, you know, well, hey, why don't they give back all the homes of the people they took them from back in 2008? How about that? <laughs> it's I just not vi- right. You know, it's I a agree. vicious cycle. So it's just going to happen again. So as Robin Harris, the late great comedian, used to say, keep your eyes on your luggage and you know Chuck D said don't believe the hype that's what it is yep so true all right thank you again Syracuse Mike you know I, I want to do this uh before we um go on and actually um get into the tea I'm gonna play two clips mm-hmm. one clip pertaining to you but the first clip uh courtesy of MSNBC uh Michael Cohen who is Trump's lawyer uh former, former lawyer, lawyer uh, the one who law- who put up his house mm-hmm. and then and got the, you know the one who who spent time in jail yeah, well, um, you I know. take a bullet for Mr. Trump. I take a bullet for him. Well, you know, you took the bullet. Yeah, you you lost your law license. You lost your house. And you might have lost your wife. I don't but know. Interesting. Um, I'm going to play this clip because, um, you know, uh, Tish James credit gave him credit for for basically the two hundred and fifty million and uh, lawsuit that she's filing against uh, the Trump organization. But I want to play this and we'll come back on the other side. Joining us now, Trump's former personal attorney and former vice president for the Trump organization, Michael Cohen. He's also the host of the Mea Culpa podcast and the author of the forthcoming book, Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics. It is out next month. Um, and I want to get to, if, if you're willing to sort of pull back the curtain a little bit about what we can see in there. But but I, I just, it's the first time we've had a chance to talk to you about you as the connective tissue. And, and she she mentioned you, she, she thanks you for your cooperation. And we had a sense, I think from Donnie Deutsch and others, that you were very cooperative with the multiple investigations into Trump. Did you think it would come to this lawsuit that you saw this week? 
Well, I didn't think it would be a 200 page <laughs> indictment, to be very honest with you. And I am extremely thankful to our tenacious and our um, just our fierce attorney general, Tish James. Uh, the shout out was extremely appreciative because I spent over 400 hours speaking to seven different congressional committees, law enforcement, attorney general, district attorney, and so on. And to be recognized and acknowledged for it was extremely, um, uh, it, was, it, was, it was appreciated. Did you, I mean. But I never thought there would be a 200 page <laughs> yeah. indictment. I, I knew of almost all of these actions that she talks about, um, but I didn't think that you needed 200, right? Uh, like the Al Capone effect. You're not going to get them on murder, extortion, racketeering. You get them on tax evasion. Yeah, you see what he's saying. And, and which, you know, a lot of us have been saying over the years, you're not going to get him on the obvious. You're going to get him on a technicality. Which, exactly. Yeah, which, which, which I agree. The other thing is, uh, I, I want to give a big shout out to uh, uh, the Cross Connection. It's on Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. Uh, Tiffany Cross uh, spent, you know, she's not originally from Atlanta, but she went to school here at Clark AU, a graduate. And uh, she does, a, I mean, when you, when you talk about really represent, representing the culture and, and giving great information, on what's going on. Um, before you do tea, because I know this will be your first story, this Boston, Boston Celtics situation. I want to play this clip and then coming out of this, we'll go into tea. Here we go. All right. And barbershops and beauty salons everywhere across the country. This is definitely being discussed. And that is the NBA major shakeup that happened this Thursday after Boston Celtics head coach Ime Doka was suspended for the entire upcoming season for, quote, violations of team policies, the team announced. Now, multiple sources have told ES ESPN and the AP that Udoka violated policy by having a relationship with the female staffer. But neither the team nor Udoka have confirmed those reports, and Udoka has not responded to NBC's request for comments, but he has released a statement apologizing to the team, fans, and his family, saying he accepts the team's decision. Many people don't, however. So joining me now to talk about that is Karen Phillips. He's a senior writer and editor at Deadspin, and back with me, Jason Johnson. Um, let's get into it, Karen. There, we're, we're not defending the allegations against Udoka, obviously, especially um, since nothing has been confirmed. But the punishment Punishment of one of the few black head coaches in the NBA who led the Celtics to playoffs nearly to a championship is one of the most severe we've ever seen, especially given what's happening with so many other people right now, coughs in Brett Favre uh, and uh, Sarver. What, what do you make of that? Um, I make of that that this is a situation where we have a lot of speculation. Um, especially in the black community, as you said, in the barbershop and beauty salons, because this is about me alone. Um, this is why we're interested. <laughs> and this is why we want to know. Um, but we don't know. And that is the issue here. There is so much out there that people think might have happened, but we don't know actually happened because I mean, Udoka isn't talking and neither the Celtics because the Celtics, the Celtics botched this. Um, these reports came out late Wednesday night, and then they have this press conference on Thursday. But still, it's like the basis of journalism. We don't know the who, what, when, where. Like, we don't know all the questions to actually have the correct conversation and commentary about this situation. What we have is a lot of paid gossip that's really juicy and entertaining, especially on Twitter. But we know we just have this black man who has this one-year suspension. And that lets me know that something real really went down. And I'm just being quiet and staying out of grown folks' business until we get all the facts. And with that said... Now then, children, it's time for tea. It's tea time, y'all. Sipping the tea with Tanya B. What say you, Tanya B? Well, you know, I, I will say this. You know, I, I, Nia Long has asked for people to pray for her family, and I'm sure they need it. I'm sure she was blindsided and somewhat devastated. But I, I just say I want to talk about this... To, to, today and hopefully the next time I speak about this it will be more facts and there will be some type of resolution or something along that line I don't know if you ever get closure to something like this when it happens so publicly so uh, Nia Long I respect you it's like everybody was team Nia Long and honestly I'm not a big sports individual but I had never heard of you Doka couldn't oh he was you couldn't say his name correctly until about last week you know what I'm saying but no and like he was huge in the sports world in, in and basketball. that's it but in, in Nia NBA, Long NBA, yeah. Go ahead. right Right, right. But Nia Long had a larger platform because she's movies, she's TV, you know, she was like, you know, the home girl, you know. Yeah. So I, I just think that um, really him being, 
you know, mentioned in the same sentences as Nia Long, actually was somewhat of a come up. But anyway, I'll just say this a couple of things. People know how long they've been together. People know that they did not, she did not want to get married. Um, he is, you know, at the end of the day, he's from a culture where monogamy is the exception, not the rule. So you kind of know what you're stepping into. But the fact that now they're really uh, focusing on this staffer, the one that did all the travel and arranged for Nia and, and their son to move to Boston two short weeks ago. You know, now let's talk about her. The third woman is not being talked about hardly at all, allegedly, nor are we having any more conversation about the Caucasian wife of that executive that he was allegedly uh, obsessed with. Now you've got the situation where, you know, I'll just say allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Okay. I got it out the way um, where he was warned to, you know, chin, he got chin checked back in July. He didn't stop. Allegedly. Now I saw where Kevin Frazier from entertainment tonight made a posting that, that he had gone to somebody whether it were, whether it was his the, the team ex his wife or the staffer's house but it was caught on a ring cam less than smart so uh, i guess he had you know really wasn't thinking and you know he did violate policy and in most companies you know just like there are morals clauses in certain you know in, in uh facets of business when you violate it it usually you're gone i'm really surprised that they no matter how well he got this team out of the bottom of the barrel i'm really surprised that they haven't fired this dude you know yeah. and he's got to realize you're not phil jackson you're not jonathan jackson you're not even tito jackson so you can't say well phil jackson did it i mean you know what he's not it's like bill coffee you don't have a seat at the same table as the phil jacksons of the world and you know, people like that so to say you know to me that's like comparing apples and oranges then there is an apple allegation that I don't know, might have been a rookie, a team uh, a team player on the Celtics. You know, I maybe thought he should be getting some more playing time and uh Apparently, Coach Yuduka was riding this guy and ride him and ride him. Now, how he found out, I don't know. But allegedly, he knew what was happening. You know, he might have stumbled into something or seen them somewhere. You know, you, you never know. But at the end of the day, I understand he was the one that said, okay, you know what? You keep effing with me, I'm going to show you. Yeah. And went to the higher-ups in the front office, and he started talking. Now, he might have started talking to this woman that he might have been friends with, the chick that did the travel. You know, we don't know. And, now, I mean, there's so much like uh, the brother's said there's so much flying around it's like a bad lifetime movie and um well you know you know, you know it, let's let's it, keep it you know we'll, we'll we'll continue to kind of follow it and and we'll update you but i i do believe uh tanya b that the, the celtics are going to have to come back out and make another statement uh, oh absolutely because there's more to stuff to, to, no yeah, there's more stuff that has come out yeah and whether it was the woman in the office or the other the the third woman or even this executive's wife yeah. you know oh well it was consensual i get you know it takes two to tango so while people will blame him because he did not he made less than smart choices yes but you know they were willing participants and i really hope that this 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 what's flying around now about an alleged pregnancy and termination of said pregnancy I really hope that's not true. And I'll just say this, you know, Nia, people are going to ride with Nia Long. Uh, um, and, you know, I mean, how do you deal with this? And here's the thing, here's the bottom line of this whole thing. And he's not the first man to do something like this, nor will he be the last. But I just say, OK, you got a black son who's probably going to be crucified, you know, when he goes to school. You know, because it's such a public situation and, you know, kids can be cruel. But what kind of example is he setting for his son as well as Nia's other son that he basically had become father to this young man that really at a crossroads being 21 years old? He did not move to Boston. He stayed in L.A. He's not in the entertainment business. But, you know, I look at I look at well, look at future. Look at Nick Cannon. Look at all of these, you know. These hood daddies, baby daddies out there. What kind of example are you setting for your black sons? And with that, can we please move on? Yep. Next story. What you got? Okay. I want to talk about the, all this crime going on. I'm like, what is it with these celebrities that have multiple homes and these big homes? I think I mentioned it last week. And now here's another situation where Arsenio Hall, who can clearly afford top of the line A-list security, in the last six weeks, he's had two breakers in his home. Now, they broke in. One time they broke in, he was actually at home. So he must have a really big house. But, you know, if nothing was taken, but my question is, okay, you got Mariah Carey, who, you know, 
made a less than smart decision of saying I'm in the French Riviera. So they broke into the house in Atlanta, which she has since um, that time put up for sale. But you've got people, Viola Davis had a break in. Uh, this is rapper T Grizzly. Don't know what he sings. Never really heard of him. Uh, he claims he was burglarized a uh, hundred uh, million dollars worth of jewelry. And even back as far as 2018, Rihanna's house was broken into. So I'm like, what are y'all doing? Yeah. So somebody call Nas and get a ring cam. So, you know, they better take a page from the book of LL. Now, LL happened to be at home and that was the exception, not the rule. When that man broke in his house, he beat the beef stew out of him. You know, he went into protecting my family mode. But I just, I, I celebrities, sometimes y'all, you know, may be creative and you just don't pay attention to your business. So I don't, you know, yeah. anyway. What's oh, let me just say this. Let me, let me just say this. I want to yeah. backtrack. If everybody is so up in arms and they're talking about Udoka, again, can we please talk about Brett Favre and his $5 million welfare fraud stealing ass <laughs> with the aid of the governor of Mississippi Crazy. to build this volleyball field at a school that his daughter happens to attend? He could have come out of his pocket and done it himself. This is the same Mississippi where people still don't have clean safe drinking water so he can go kick rocks in the open toe shoe. I'm going to say okay. this and let's move on to the next story, Tanya B. But uh, yeah. they have just indicted uh, the guy who was actually over uh, the welfare distribution in Mississippi. He's been indicted. And they should. And uh, I think he took a plea to give them more information. So I think expect that story uh, to probably within the next few weeks yeah. uh, to, to have some resolution. Let, let's go to the next story. What else you got? Okay, let me just say this. No, Brett Farr is losing, you know, you're being greedy. Karma's coming back to get you. Your show's been put on hiatus and you're losing gigs. But anyway, it is what it is. He probably won't feel it anyway. Okay, now I want to talk about just a um, few things I set call the Hip Hop Chronicles. I just want to say five on it to 50 Cent. I don't call him rapper anymore. He's really become a serial entrepreneur. And uh, you may recall that he actually left New York and moved to Texas and now he is in negotiations for two major purchases. One is of the Houston Astros and the other is of the Houston Texans. OK, and I think that that's when you got to have a big bag to do that, because yeah, a lot of people have stuff. tried to buy other you know, uh, professional teams and they have not succeeded. Um, he's severed ties with the Stars Network, which I didn't watch until Power came on. And I'm sure he'll go somewhere else. I'm hearing he may go to BET in what capacity. I don't know, but they surely need a lifeline over there. I'm hearing he's going to open more restaurants and that he also may be the major uh, backer in an online casino. People you know, still don't want to go to the casino because people are still catching COVID. And so online casino you know, just the experience you can, you know, have uh, from the comfort of your own home, but it can also become addictive. Well, they'll stop you because you can't get credit like that. Yep. And I want to say five on into rapper Common. He's making his Broadway debut this fall in a play called Between Riverside and Crazy, where he plays the recently paroled son of an ex-cop. So that should be interesting. And um, future uh, what, father of 10 by eight women. Uh, may now be held back in court, I think, because he sold the one thing, one asset he did have was his publishing. He sold that, so now he can move out of the two bedroom because it couldn't accommodate all those kids anyway. But I'm wondering if now the baby mom's going to come back after him to get an increase in child support or to get that back child support. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention was there's this, this young head, DJ Academics, and he's just ignorant. And that's really all there is because you don't go and diss the legends of hip hop, which is a global culture, which really has a foothold in everything that happens everywhere. So I just want to say five lines to um, the GOAT LL Cool J and to Chub Rock, who just very eloquently chin checked him and educated him about where he was wrong, which was pretty much everywhere. But the thing I don't I, I call him dumb donkey of the week is that when you have a beef with somebody in hip hop, you do not go after their children. OK. Yeah. And that's what he started doing, going after some of the kids of some of these hip hop artists. And that that, just, that ain't fly. It no, just ain't not fly. At all. Not at you all. know what else is not fly? What's that? Uh, Babyface, what is going on? He finally got some swagger. He's out there working. You know, he's been people think he's been married two times. He's been married three times. Third time was not a charm. And now word on the street is that he's been turned T U R A N T turned out by a 33 year old blonde gold digger who said she loves money. He just sold this catalog for 200 million dollars. Um, and now he's just kind of baby faces lot. He's going to lose his swag with, with this whole thing, with this woman who's just bossing around 
you know, him and everything. You can't go out on tour and you built bridges and have relationships, whether it's fans or executives or radio people. And she's like, you can take a picture. You can't. Kenny, go over. She calls him Kenny. You go over here. You do this. You do that. That is not a good look. So I hope Babyface can get it together. All right, what you got next? And you got big news next. What's that? Go ahead. Um, um, one more thing. I'll say Tiffany Haddish has, and has settled this uh, the sex abuse allegation lawsuit. And she said she lost everything, lost all her gigs. I think she needs to just lay back in the cut and be quiet for a while because this woman that was a mother of these kids this happened in 2014 she laid back I think she lay in wait to see which one of them would blow up either Tiffany or Aries Spears Aries Spears you know he can't breathe with, uh, he can't breathe clearly without sitting down he never hit a lick she hit a lick so they went after Tiffany because Aries has nothing to pay and this woman that is you know thinks Tef Tiffany is such a horrible person why was she at Tiffany's birthday party two years ago and they were just looking for a check and you know I get it but it's it all kind of reminds you like Michael Jackson he paid to make those people go away and so I, I hope she can recover from this and lastly dun, 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 yes I have um, news um, you know, as you may have heard earlier this week Apple Music has now ponied up 50 million dollars to become the sponsor of the Super Bowl halftime show which was a Great. fancy event for <laughs> years and years and years and then we heard that Taylor Swift was going to be the halftime entertainment then she put out a statement saying that she said thanks but no thanks and it has been confirmed that the 2023 Super Bowl halftime Time show headliner is Rihanna. Rihanna. Yes. Rihanna. Now, will she bring out what's the baby name? Ace that ASAP. Her ASAP baby daddy. But anyway, she probably will. She probably will. Let yeah, me, give, well, it, let me said, give it up for for Rihanna. It, Riri. I mean, because honestly, yeah. that's that's real big. That's real big. I mean, I think that's perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, selection. what people don't realize. Yeah. Well, he he was down at the uh, no at Rolling Loud in New York, and he said he's not doing any more appearances till his album comes out. Watch it come out Super Bowl weekend. But the other thing is, that people don't realize it's really you know Rihanna may have something. You know, we've been waiting for this new album for what six, seven, eight, ten, twelve years. But you know. These these artists don't get paid to do the show. They have to actually pay in and absorb the the cost of it. So when you see all these pyrotechnics and you know all this foo foo and they swinging from the you know the rafters and whatnot, they got to come out of pocket and pay that. So, yep, good stuff. You know stuff. this I will watch this halftime show. I would watch. All right, y'all. Here we go. What you watching this week, Tommy B? Hey, but you know fall season, y'all. Again, another amazing week of Atlanta. Hopefully you had a chance. And I you know I really would love some feedback on on Atlanta. Uh, this episode was born to die. And, and the interesting thing, Tanya B, um, they were talking about, quote unquote, dusty rappers. And somebody was giving oh, advice Lord. to Paperboy, said, hey, you're an older rapper. You need to get a YWA. Do you know what YWA stands for? I'm not going to say it. A young, <laughs> young white avatar. So basically, Ooh, these older Lord. rappers were basically setting themselves up for future by finding these young white white rappers. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the story. But anyway, uh, that's part of the episode. Also, as part of this episode, Earn goes in search of D'Angelo, which is hilarious. It is. It is hilarious. Uh, he's trying to sign yeah. D'Angelo to his company. The other thing is uh, Atlanta, Atlanta just really continues to show the absurdity of all we do uh, and, 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 and also <laughs> in the city, in, in the, but not only in the city, but in, in our industry. Next week, it's going to be uh, the episode is light skinned. You know, so that's not skinned. Not oh, skinned. oh, but next but what, week's wait. episode is light skinned. <laughs> Let me get through it now. Let me get through it. Uh, Abbott Elementary laughing. made uh, again made its debut this week. I don't know if y'all had a chance to see it. Another great episode. I did. Uh, Janine is really having some troubles getting over Tariq. But, uh, you know, he was it, a it leash. Really, yeah, it was, it was time to let him go. Wait, wait, and, that was a bad cuffing. That was a bad cuffing season. <laughs> yes, okay. it was. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. SNL yeah. is coming back October 1st. First three weeks you'll have his musical guest Kendrick Lamar, uh, Willow and Meg The Stallion will double as Who? host and musical guest. Yo, come on, leave Willow alone. And, and, and I can't wait really until February on Netflix. Uh, one of my favorite Netflix series. Y'all may not have heard of this, but season four of You. Y-O-U, you comes out. And if you know what I'm talking about, you'll totally understand why I can't wait until February 2023. <laughs> uh, actually, part one of you comes out in February 2023. And then part two comes out in March of 2023. Joe is back with a new name. And actually, they're going to be uh, they're supposed to be across the pond in London. He's, he's in a different country. Uh, I had a chance to check out on Netflix, y'all. Um, and I know people are talking about Tyler Perry's uh, Jazzman uh, Blues, J Jazzman's Blues. 
And, and I'm telling you, um, I will tell you that it is the real deal. Um, my my expectations have definitely been raised for Tyler Perry movies. Uh, there's no question he has been, you know, without Tyler Perry is the best at catering to his core. But I'm telling y'all with this movie, he's going to broaden his audience. He's going to pick up people who, who have, let me say, who haven't Good. watched him in a long mm. time. A lot of folks, I think, are coming back. Uh, I will say it's probably one of the best black, uh, if anything, one of the best new releases on Netflix. And and shout out to uh, Tyler Perry and his crew for bringing in Terrence Blanchard. Uh, Terrence Blanchard is responsible for creating the music. Of course, Terrence Blanchard uh, rode with Spike Lee for so many years. Uh, a wizard at, at uh, creating songs and, and jazz and, and definitely scoring scoring movies. Also, shout out to TP for bringing in Debbie Allen. Uh, to handle the dance. And I know Debbie Allen probably had some influence on him, even when it came down to probably directing this movie again, probably if not his best, uh, it's going to be considered one of his best. And, and I definitely think it's going to open up his audience to a new, to, an, uh, I mean, open up his, his, his following his core to a new audience. Uh, another quick movie. My, my, my last uh, recommendation is Lou. And um, I did not expect it. I just happened, you know, you see new releases. I popped it on and uh, it's new on Netflix. Journey Smollett uh, as a widowed single mom, uh, Academy Award winning actress uh, from I, Tanya, uh, Alice and Janney as mysterious survivalists teaming up to find uh, Journey's kidnapped girl. Uh, and it's it's done by Bad Robot who is uh, the production company that run that's owned by JJ Abrams. And, and, and it is definitely, uh, I, I, I recommend it. It's a fun watch. And by the end of it, it looks like there will probably be a sequel to it. So one more thing, and then we'll close this out. Ryan Murphy, please don't do any more Jeffrey. Dahmer. I mean, the Jeffrey Dahmer thing was unnecessary. Uh, we don't need we don't. And, and I'll just say to Hollywood and anybody in, in TV, we don't need no more Jeffrey Dahmer stories, y'all. We really don't. Let's let's move on. Uh, you know, uh, there was a story in, in uh, I forgot which uh, news, which newspaper, which uh, uh, entertainment uh, blog that basically mentioned a lot of the families who are still dealing with the repercussions of what Dahmer did, because there were many black Young black men. Yeah, they didn't care because he was killing this. black people. And, and they got to relive the trauma all over again. They are that reliving the trauma. That Absolutely. Sue, so, you know, so is, so is ass. So, you know, give it up, y'all. Stop, stop. Uh, again, we'd love you to weigh in on the people poll. Uh, you can go to castropolis.net, hit the people poll. Uh, you can leave a voicemail. You can leave in, uh, comments on social media. Again, uh, big shout out to KW. Thank you so much, man, for, for your commentary. We ain't doing the yeah. shot, man. We got to find another show, KW. <laughs> we got to find Please. another show. We ain't doing our shot update. And again, uh, go to castropolis.net. Uh, the merch store is open. All you got to do is go to castropolis.net. Everything is there. Uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, Onyi, Onyi Love. Uh, the website is Onyi.love. And I uh, just got to say a uh, quick thanks to her again. Tanya, B, you got any last minute uh, comments? Uh, not really. Just um, if you haven't checked out Jazz Man's Blues, please do so. And also just a reminder that the Sydney Portier uh, documentary is on Apple TV, produced by Oprah Winfrey and Reginald House Party Hudlin. Did you have a chance to see it? I mean, I heard some great things. <laughs> I did not. Yeah. I, I want to watch it and, you know, and focus and be quiet and, and get them all out of popcorn. So. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, it's on my list to watch this week. So but I had to get these other two out of the way. Again, go to Castropolis. Now, one more quick announcement and then we'll we'll uh, we'll wrap this thing up. But, you know, I've done everything pretty much in my career. I mean, that I've wanted to do, uh, you know, so uh, there was one thing left on my bucket list that I wanted to do. I wanted to do a book. And y'all, I, I am I am releasing uh, a novella for Halloween. It's going to be coming out in October. Uh, I'll have more details in episode 148, but I'm releasing a digital novella uh, anthology uh, perfect for the Halloween season. And I, I think you guys will like it. I, you know, I'll get more details next week in episode 148. Mm, but it, okay. it is going to be a digital novella. I'll explain what that is for, for y'all for y'all's and who don't read. You know, I was reading. That. That's me coming from the Tyler Perry, Jim Crow uh, era. But but really and truly, y'all, uh, I'd love your thoughts, though. Give us some feedback on on Jasmine Blues. I mean, it, Twitter has been really very, you know, Twitter is pretty, pretty harsh can be pretty hard on TP and, 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 um, you know, Twitter has, has really been, it's been very positive. The feedback has been very, very positive. 
again y'all go to castropolis.net again once again the one and only tanya b y'all give it up for her. thank you so much tanya b yeah, for yeah, all yeah. you do thanks for thanks for making it in here y'all and with that uh episode 148 is in the can and we are out of here y'all peace yeah, on my way to the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. Yes. Next week. Hey, holla. You've been listening to the G Podcast with your host, Tommy B. The G Podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Thanks for listening.